Now let's talk about something called resistivity, that is the tendency of a material to resist the flow of charge. If we know the electric field in a wire causing a current that has current density J, we can introduce the quantity called the resistivity rho and its reciprocal, which is the conductivity, sigma, of a material. The relationship is E equals rho times J, which means that for a given electric field, the higher the resistivity of the material, the less the current density that will be created. Resistivity is related to resistance, but it is not the same as resistance. We will see soon that the resistance of any particular piece of wire depends on its length and its cross-sectional area, as well as, as on its resistivity. All substances have a resistivity, and we can see some values for it on the next page. So this table lets you compare the resistivities of some different materials. Starting down the bottom, you can see some insulators like glass and quartz. Their resistivities are typically about 10 to the power 15. Compared to that, you can see some metals up the top, a few different values with different resistivities, but they're mostly of the order of 10 to the minus 8. Semiconductors in the middle there have resistivities about 10 cubed, though you can see that that's for pure silicon. As soon as you dope the silicon, which means adding extra charge carriers to it, the resistivity goes down by several orders of magnitude. As you know from junior science, the whole purpose of the voltage that creates current in a circuit is to run the electrical device that turns electrical energy into the form that you want, like light, sound or movement. These devices are called resistors. Resistors have another purpose in circuit design though. They're there to limit the amount of current going through a wire. If we apply the same potential difference between the ends of similar shaped blocks of copper and glass, very different currents result. The difference is because of their electrical resistance. We find the resistance of any block of material that we want by applying a potential difference V across it and measuring the current I that results. We use the equation that we know is Ohm's law to calculate the resistance. The unit for resistance that follows from this equation, since R equals V over I, the unit of resistance would be the volt per ampere. But it occurs so often that we give it a name of its own, and we call it after Ohm. Every material other than a superconductor has some electrical resistance. This means that even conducting wires have some small resistance. It depends on its length, its cross-sectional area, and the resistivity of that material. Metals all have low resistivities, which means that they are good conductors of current, but some metals are better than others, as you would have seen in the resistivity table a few pages back. Copper is one of the lowest resistivity metals, which is why it's used so much in wiring. You notice that this wire here is made up of finer wires. That doesn't matter, you just have to add up the cross-sectional areas of each thin wire to get the total area. Let's do a quick calculation using Ohm's law. We're going to look at the resistance of a torch here. We can see that this one is taking two 1.5 volt batteries, which gives three volts total, and we have a current of 0.4 amps flowing in the bulb. 